Do you hear me? Yes. All right, okay. All right. So we see many complex examples to the asset principle, so it's quite de depressing. So let's start by <laughs> stating some cases where it's true. <laughs> so And in fact, I always write these two things together, as a principle and, and weak approximation. Uh, it's a matter of experience that if you look at the literature, you'll find that the classes of varieties for which people manage to prove weak approximation at all places, very often are the same ones as the, uh, the kind of varieties for which you manage to prove the as a principle for this type of geometric variety. So for instance, quadric. Of course, proving that the quadric with a rational point satisfies weak approximation is very easy because the quadric with a rational point, except in dimension zero, uh, is, uh, is bi-rational to projective space and weak approximation holds for projective space. Whereas proving the asset principle is difficult. But nevertheless, that's the point. And another matter of experience is that if you look at the Kant examples in the literature, quite often you'll find that, uh, well, the ones for which you can find counterexample to weak approximation, with a lot of hard work, you'll also find equations of the same type in degree, uh, number of variables, for which you have a counterexample to as a principle. So they just go on and on. And in fact, when you want to prove them for a class of variety, it's good to have these two hypotheses to, to build up iteratively, and you build on both as a principle and weak approximation for the previous varieties. So cases when it's known, so I, I told you about quadrics. Now quadrics are, let's say quadrics of dimension is one, smooth quadric of dimension is one, are smooth projective varieties with an action, a transitive action of a, of a linear algebraic group. And so this is a second class for which has a principle new composition have been shown to hold. X over K, smooth, projective, geometry connected. And there exists a group G, a linear algebraic group, connected with uh, an action of G on X, which means that, uh, as you know, G, G1, G2 applied to X is uh, G1, G2 applied to X for any point in X of K bar. This is over for at the level of X of K bar. And such that, uh, and that's it. Okay, so, uh, which is transitive. Transitive, that is, uh, for all X zero in X of K bar, the set of points G of K bar X0 is X of K bar. So for this case, the Hasser principle and weak approximation hold. And this generalized, this is the case of quadrix. Yeah? No, no, I don't want to take away projective. No, no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to take away projective. No, 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 uh, no it is projective here. We'll see something later. But uh, I'm saying Hasser principle and weak approximation. Okay. Uh, Okay, and then this, in fact, the proof of this kind of this statement goes hand in hand with something which has occupied uh, uh, people in number theory for a number of years between uh, maybe 1935 and uh, Chernousov, which was uh, maybe 1990, which is the Hasser principle and weak approximation for principal homogeneous spaces. of semi-simple, simply connected, linear algebraic groups. So, uh, typical example of an algebraic closure of a semi-simple, simple algebraic group is SLN. Okay. And a twisted version of SLN is SLD for a central simple algebra of a ground field. So for instance, uh, the classical result of Eichler is that if you take D over K, a central simple algebra over, over a field K, then element alpha in K star is a reduced norm from D star if on an if the same holds ever locally. Alpha belongs to K V star, intersection reduced norm of D V star for all V in omega. And that translates into a statement about a principle on general space under SLD. Okay. 
So now, the, in fact, it would be worse looking at the proof of these theorems again and again, because this is one. This this is a big theorem, a very classical theorem. This one that has a prin so principal object in space means that you have a transitive x is not projective anymore now. You have a, a transitive action, and that action is faithful. That is, all the isotropic groups are trivial. And this, this is a big theorem, this one. Uh, and it's, I, I repeat, it would be worth uh, getting a good proof for this, because the proof is case by case. People look at the group of top AN, BN, CN, E6, E7, E8 at the end, which is what Chernovsov did. Anyway, it holds in these cases. Now, this is the, the nice part of the story. The, the bad part is, as, as we've heard, is that there are many counterexamples. To as a principle, and we got or weak approximation, I should say or. And so we saw at the very beginning of the lectures, we saw the example of curves of genus one. And you can produce examples like this for curves of genus bigger than zero. Uh, uh, back in, 19th, uh, in the 30s, Hasse and, 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 and Witt produced a counterexample to the Hasse principles for equation of this type. Norm k of a q of x1 omega 1 plus dot 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 plus xn omega n equals c. That is, you ask, you have a, a field extension, and you ask whether if an element is a norm everywhere locally over each completion, is it a norm? So when the extension is cyclic, this is a well known theorem of Hasse, but when it's not cyclic, there are counterexamples. So for instance, there are counterexamples with cap, uh, k of a q galois, and already the first case you could think of, galois k of a q is then mod 2 cross n mod 2. And that's a principle of general space under a torus. A torus is a twisted form of a power of GM. And you could have hoped that for semi-simple groups, the situation was better. But no, uh, for there exist principle of general spaces of G, uh, semi-simple, not simply connected. For which, as a principle, fails. So these were constructed by Serre. And it's at the end of his uh, cumulogy Galoisian in the first edition already. OK, and there are other examples which look quite simple, as, the, as in the, the lecture you just had. So there are counterexamples for uh, surfaces which, over their closure, become rational. So the, the simplest kind of examples, and they, somehow one of the oldest is this one, due to Iskowski. So over Q, you look at uh, y plus x squared equals 3 minus x squared times x squared minus 2 over Q. So that's obviously rational, because if you go over to Q of root minus 1, this left-hand side is just like yz, so it's parameterized. But it's a counterexample to the Asa principle. Okay. So uh, counterexamples. Now, OK, next come the next story, so Brahmanin. So you, you've heard that many times, but it's good to repeat. So, uh, so we look at x over k, smooth, projective, uh, geometry connected. And then we, so Manin observes that the set of rational points of k, so we have these inclusions, x of a k top, including an x of a k uh, bro, bro means bro x here, inside an f x of a k. So these are the adels. X of k embeds into the adels by the diagonal embedding. X is proper. So this is just product of x of kv. And then inside, you have the adels, which are also global to the bribe of x. And the rational points lie in, inside here. So you've seen that many times now. And it's, it's a closed set for the adelic topology. So in fact, the, the closure of x of k for the adelic topology lies inside here. And so, OK, as Bianca Vira explained, uh, you have this. Uh, Thing which was formed later, so this is 1970. Uh, 30 years later, you had this. I mean, nobody believed that this would be the only obstruction to that. So the question is the, the question, naive question is x of k top equal to x of a k bro x? So which is, the answer is no. This is the scarborough example, and then many later examples. 
And so you have the story of the Brahman abstraction, but I, I, the etat Brahman abstraction, but I, I won't go into that. I, I want to stick to the, to the problematic of finding classes of varieties for which actually the naive question has a positive answer. Yes? I'm sorry? Top, top? The, it means the closure. So you look at the rational points sitting in, in product of X of KV, and you have the topology on X of, X of KV, you have the product topology, take the closure. So you're interested in families of local points which you can approximate by a rational point. Yeah, this is the, 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 the idyllic topology. So the answer to this question is no, but so uh, based on, uh, on evidence from various sources uh, back in, uh, in, I mean, okay, quite a few years ago, so I can I conjecture that uh, so this is where I, I managed to reach the, this place. Uh, uh, so I can I uh, conjecture that for surfaces which are geometrically rational, all this should be true. And in fact, there's a general conjecture, which was put forward a bit later, is that if X, so I'm going to write a more general conjecture. Okay. <laughs> the, the conjecture was that if you take a surface which over k bar is birational to P2, then it should be true that uh, the closure of the set of rational points is equal to the Brownian in set. Okay. And this conjecture is subsumed in the following conjecture in arbitrary dimension. If you take a, X over k smooth projective geometrically connected such that X bar is uh, a notion which has emerged around 1990, then uh, we should have that x of ak top is equal to x of ak bar x. So I just, I'd say what rationally connected means. So there, it's, 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 a, it's a notion which has been studied a lot by uh, Kolar, Miyaoka, Kolar, Miyaoki, Miyaoka, sorry. Miyaoka and Mori. So X over K bar is rationally connected. If, so we have K, so I'm going, to, I'm thinking of number fields. I, I'm going to embed this in, this, in the complex field. If uh, there are many equivalent definitions, one definition is that any two points, A, B, in X of C, are connected by, by a P1. That is, you have a map from P1C, a morphism from P1C to XC, so that your A is the image of one point here, let's say zero, and B is the image of one point here. So any two points can be connected by a P1. So that's definitely false for IBM variety, for instance. Okay? So that's a rationally connected variety. And for this class of varieties, it's an open, well, this is a, so in French, this is called an open question. In American, it's called a conjecture, right? <laughs> so when do we know this? So I, I, uh, maybe I should leave this, okay, I'll leave this here. So known cases. Of uh, X of AK top equals x of a k Brahmanian. So this is sometimes, we sometimes say for this, the Brahmanian obstruction is the only obstruction to has a principle and weak approximation when this property holds. So uh, quite striking, uh, a very sweeping result is due to a combination of work of Sansuk and Baravoy, where you take x, which contains an open set, u, so x is smooth projective, and you have an open, a Zariski open set U, which is a homogeneous space of a connected linear algebraic group. With, and then there's a technical condition, with uh, the stabilizers, the isotropic group of a algebraic closure, with, for all x, and it's enough, to, it's enough to look at one point in U of k bar, Gx, the stabilizer of x, is connected. Okay, it's a technical condition which we need for the proofs. Uh, we don't know whether it's necessary, but uh, it's, a, needs for, it's needed for the proof. So you take a homogeneous space of a 
uh, connected knowledge by group, and you take a smooth compactification of that of that of that object, and then it's a CRM that x of k top is equal to x of a k br. Okay. So that's the class of where uh, you know homogeneous spaces. You have a you, you need a group, you need a bright group to play with. There's a lot of structure, so you manage to do things. Okay. But uh, these rationally connected varieties, there are lots of them which are not of this uh, this nature. Okay. So. Uh, uh, so in fact, there is one case. So this was a success of something which uh, we have developed in the in the in the seventies. And so there is one case which the first case which is not like this, where we could prove this statement is. So this is the case of flat Shetley surfaces, which are given by an affine equation. It's a smooth compactification of something given by an equation. Y squared minus AZ squared equals P of X. So we've seen such equations many times, where the degree of P is three or four. So if the degree is two, one or two, we'd have a quadric. It's, uh, we know everything about quadrics. But if the degree is three or four, you look at surfaces like this, where P is a separable polynomial. And you take X as a smooth compactification. And in that case, we have, so this is a CRM. Uh, due to uh, uh, myself, sans you can swim in there. Well, actually, it took us three years to write the paper. Seven. That uh, x of k top is equal to x of a k br. X. Now, you might say, okay, look, I mean, we have this beautiful Gerald CRM. And here is this miserable result for this, uh, this surfaces, very special. Now, there's a big, there's one difference between the type of varieties which you have here and this here, is that I can show you, well, I can, I can tell you why, in fact, a, a, a surface like this cannot be even stable by rational to a variety of that type. So you cannot prove that result by using the result, uh, the previous result. So, fact. This x is not stably k by rational to one of the previous ones. Uh, I should have said that, I should have said from the very beginning that when we discussed as a principle, a weak approximation, and uh, whether the Brahman abstraction is the only one for smooth projective variety, that's a partial invariance. So if you know it for one variety, smooth projective variety, you have another one which is smooth projective and partial to this one, then you have it for the other one. So that's why I, I'm, I'm And the reason, I mean, the reason why this is true is that, well, this fact here is that for, Chatelet, for, for this previous varieties, varieties like this, we have the pro following property. The brog of x k v divided by brog of k v is zero for almost all v. Okay, so if you look at, this is the invariant we look at. And for these ones here, unless in trivial cases, this is not true. Roughly speaking, say if I take p of x to be uh, I mean, roughly speaking, one prime out of two, the, 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 the quotient here will be non-trivial. Okay, so, so the way we proved that result was by using uh, descent and vibrations. So proof using descent plus vibration. And uh, so descent is an analog of the classical descent on, the, on elliptic curves, except that in, instead of looking at uh, coverings, which are finite coverings, uh, finite coverings, which are torsos in a finite group, you look at uh, torsos in a torus. So I don't want to go into this, because what we want, we're going to see in these lectures is that in many cases, 
the use of descent can be used, replaced by uh, use by something called Aris formal lemma, which I plan to discuss. So I, I, I don't discuss the proof here. Okay, so, and I come to, uh, so, before, so one thing I, I still want to do is to remind you that uh, if we have x over k smooth projective, and projective is important, and we have an element a in the bra group of x, a k is a number field, huh? For all v in omega k, omega k, the set of places of k, except phi lemine, the evaluation of a on Brab uh, on, the, on the KV points, evaluation of a, has zero image. Image equals zero. So if I have a projective variety of an element in the bar group, when I evaluate on the KV points, I always get zero, except at five limited places. And that's a great help in defining the bar abstraction because you take a, a priori an infinite sum, but in fact, almost all the, 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 the summons are zero, automatically zero. Yeah? And so that's, you can re view this in, terms, in, in the case when you have this bra element of bar of X, which is represented by uh, a severe bar variety, now this vibration here, all the fibers are integral, and so we're in a situation like the one I was mentioning before. The bottom variety is, is projective, and, and the, the vibration is proper with all the fibers geometry integral. We know that this implies that y of kv goes to x of kv is onto for almost all v. So now we want to look at the situation where, in fact, this is, doesn't work. So what do I mean by this doesn't work? So I take, uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what, what happens for almost all V? So for almost all V, this map is on two. Okay. Thank you. And that corresponds to the fact that the A vanishes on all the KV points. So this map is on two. Now, we're going to look at the situation where X is not projective. So what if x is not projective? So, uh, so here's the theorem. Take x over k, smooth, uh, geometrically connected. Okay, now I'm going to be a bit technical. I take a model of x over k over an open set of the ring of integers. So model of x over spec k, which I just can say take, take. And then I have an open set u in x, which is given to me, open. And I have an element alpha in the bra group of u. And I assume that this element in the bra group of u doesn't come from an element of the bra of x, which badly behaved at, the, at, the, at infinity. Uh, then there exists infinitely many v in omega k such that such that uh, there exists an mv in u of kv intersection x of ov, so the v are not in s, I mean, s is finite here, and alpha evaluated at mv is not zero. So if x was proper, you could forget about this business with the model, but uh, I, I, want, I really want to do it like this. Okay. So this is just the opposite of what we saw. We have infinite many places for which you can find local points where the alpha takes a non-zero value. Okay. So here, x was projective. Here, this alpha is poles. 
And then uh, just the opposite happens. So this, um, I'm going to show you how this works in a concrete, how one proves this in a concrete case and how one uses it. So it's a bad thing. You feel that you're going to be in trouble. You won't be able to take an infinite size of such elements and what can you do with them? So the, uh, yeah. It's U of KV intersection X of OV. So I want a KV point which lies in U, but which is integral for the structure X over spec OS. Okay? Yeah? So I, I repeat, if X over K was, in the case when X over K is projective, X of OV is the same as X of KV. So, so I could forget this one. Okay. Okay, so let me, I, I mean, I, I believe in examples. So, uh, Let's look at the situation where we look at, this, look at this basic equation, y squared minus az squared equals p of t, q of t, where uh, p of t and q of t are irreducible, each irreducible, of uh, odd degree. And a is a non-square in k. It's in k, but not non square. So we look at this uh, surface, and we assume that it has points everywhere locally. So suppose, so let's call it u. This is our u. And I take the open set where this is different from zero. So this is u. Uh, so assume product of u of kv is not, is not empty. All v. Okay. So now we consider the element alpha, the quaternion algebra, a comma p of t. Uh, what happens is that if you compute bar groups, you will find that this element alpha p of t is not in the bar group of the smooth projective model. It's badly behaved at infinity. Okay. So in fact, so in, in, indeed, if I take v not in s, so there's an obvious s associated to the s obvious bad set, bad set of primes, which means P of t is not integral, so you take the places above two, the places for which a is, is, a, is not a unit, the places where p of t has denominators, where q of t has denominators, the places where p of t doesn't reduce to something separable. Okay, so that's finitely many places. You throw them into your bad set of s. Okay. Now, if I take v not in s, and v not in s such that a uh, is not a square in kv, and there are infinitely many v's by Chebotarev, Uh, let me take, if I take t to be 1 over universal parameter at v, and I look at what happens on the right-hand side. So I find that the valuation of p, so I, let's, let's call it tv, the valuation of p of tv, q of tv, is even. Because uh, it's the valuation of, of p of tv will be what? Will be minus the degree of p, simulate minus the degree of q, and the sum is even, so the variation is even. So because the variation is even, the extension kv root over kv is unramified, because we are not in s, this implies that there's a solution. Okay. So now, uh, what we, uh, and if, if, so that's a fact, and if v is not in s, uh, there exhaust, there's also, there's also exist a point M, so this is point MV of, uh, in U of KV. There also exists a point uh, M dash V in U of KV where alpha of M dash V is actually zero. So you get the two values uh, at, at, the, at the place V for which A is not a square because it's just, it, it's enough to take T of positive variation because then uh, the variation of this would just be the variation of the constant term which is supposed to be unit similar on the other side. Okay? Okay. So now, uh, from this, you find that it's very easy to show that there exists a family MV, uh, V in omega, in the product of the U of KV, such that uh, the sum 
of the, in fact, I should say, in the, even in the others of U, which is simpler, in the others of U, that is, it's integral at almost all V, and therefore I can make my sum, sum V in omega, of the alpha of MV is zero. Because I, t I told you that at any place on, not outside of S, I can find a, a point such that alpha of M dash V is zero. So I start taking a finite set of places containing S, I find local, I know I have local points. I evaluate this sum for V and S, but either is zero is one half. If it's one half, I pick up a place V outside where A is not a square. I find a point as, like here where the other value is one half. I add this and then my sum now is zero. And at the, the remaining places, I take an M dash V like this one. So I produce a family like this. And then this is where we look at uh, the, the positive information in the, in, the, um, in the complex about the Brouwer group, which is that it's not on the Brouwer of K, it goes direct sum of Brouwer of K, it goes to cumulative. It's not on the complex, it's exact. That is, if you have a sum of, local, of uh, local values which add up to zero, it comes from some global element. It creates a global element. Okay? And in fact, this, 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 this fact here is translated in a very simple fashion, which is, instead of looking in tokens of part, about Brouwer, Brouwer groups, here we, uh, we have a situation where there's a finite cyclic extension, quadratic extension, capital K is K of root A. And we have an exact sequence like this. So this corresponds to something which is embedded in the Brouwer of K. This is embedded in the direction of the Brouwer of KV. This is embedded in Q mod Z. So it's a subsequence of the sequence of class feed theory. So what we have here on the right hand side is that we have our PFTV, which live here. And the fact that this sum is zero exactly says that this goes to, to zero here. And therefore, there exists, so by class fit theory, there exists uh, an element C in K star, such that ever locally, C and P of TV differ multiplicatively by the norm of uh, an element in KV. So we've this is a kind of descent. We're producing some auxiliary objects here. Okay? So what we find from out of this is that, uh, I, so I'll, I'll be short at this point. What we find out of this is uh, that we can solve the following system. C uh, P of T, and then Y2 square minus A Z2 square. These are new variables. Y1, Z1, Y2, Z2 equals C minus one Q of T. So we've found a C in K star, such that this thing has solutions in all KVs. And now this variety, so let me put me different from zero here, has an obvious map to Y square minus AZ square equals P of T, Q of T. Because if I have solutions for this system, I, I just multiply the two, and I get product of two norms, which of course is a norm, and I get a solution here. Okay? So the outcome is that, uh, let's call this, this, this variety uh, star here, this one, and this little one, but two star, this one is star. So the outcome is that what we have proved is that uh, if star has points in all KVs, then there exists a sin K star, such that uh, star star index C has points in all KV. This is a descent of sort, except that a descent on an open variety instead of the smooth projective varieties we've been using for many times. And so now we're in a situation where, for instance, if you believe Shinsen's conjecture, you know that's the principle here. So here, Shinsen's conjecture implies as a principle. So if you believe in Shinsen, this auxiliary variety which, for which we've proven that it has a rational point ever locally, has a rational point, you push it down, you get a rational point on your surface. So the, the comment, so we've seen this, uh, really we've seen this lemma in action in a concrete case. Uh, one comment about this is that it's strange because I never mentioned Brouwer Manin in the story, but there's a reason for, I think I already told you that if you take an equation like this, y squared is x squared equals, I told you that if 
we look at y square minus vertical equals p of t reducible, the bra group is trivial, but it's a fact that if you take a product of just two, two reducible per null odd degree, you can compute that the bra group also is trivial in that case. So there was no bra main obstruction. Right, so now this, uh, this uh, I told you what happened when we had one element in the bra group of U, uh, which is ramified at infinity. It's, it doesn't belong to bar of X. But in practice, we, we're interested in looking at more, more, more elements. And so here's uh, Harry's formal lemma. So this is in 1994. It's a committal uh, development of that one. So you take x over k, smooth. Uh, let's say project, so, well, okay, let me smooth uh, as before, okay. And I have u in x, an open set, smooth irreducible, of course. I'm still over my, my number field. I have an open set, and I have a finite subgroup not only one element, finite subgroup of Brab of U. And I take a point PV in the adels of U, and I assume, what do I assume? I assume, so assume that for all elements alpha in B intersection, the Brab of X, so the ones which are nicely behaved, which have no pole at infinity, uh, there's no obstruction to the, uh, in the brown minus style. So the sum of the alpha of PV is zero in omega k. And then I fix myself a finite set S of places, finite set. And then the statement is that then there exists another family P dash V in U of AK, in the adels of U, with uh, U dash V equals UV, uh, sorry, sorry, with P dash V equals PV for V in S, at fi finite many places, such that for all alpha, this time in the whole bar B, group B, the sum of the alpha of P dash V, V in omega, is zero. Okay, the assumption was we start, so we had a, this finite subgroup of Rob of U. We assume that our Adel was orthogonal to the nice part of this nice subgroup. Then, in fact, we can modify our Adel, keeping it fixed as finite many places, in such a way that the new Adel is orthogonal to the whole B. So if you, if you use this, and I, I won't do the exercise, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what you can do easily. So if you look at y square minus az square, so corollary, look at y square, it's just an example, equals a product of pi of t. Now I take an arbitrary number of a reducible polynomial. Uh, different from zero. So this is our u and say x is a smooth compactification, smooth x, smooth compactification. Uh, if uh, x, let, let me make a simple statement. If x of a k bro x is not empty, and if Shinsel is true, then x of k is not empty. Because, and so, because in the, just four minutes. Yeah, okay, because I, I'm not going to explain that. So it's, uh, I mean, you look at auxiliary variety, you create auxiliary varieties of the shape pi of t equals ci uh, yi square minus az i square. i is one n. With the family, with the projection down to this one. And then from the hypothesis that you had, you had here, using, these various 
uh, A comma PIFT, so now you have several of these elements in the bar group of your surface. But they might be ramified, never mind. You, you manage to produce these CIs in such a way that this thing has points ever locally and has a morphism over K down to this one. And then because the PI are reducible, if you believe in Shinsel, this thing satisfies that as a principle, so there's a rational point, therefore this one is a rational point. Now, why am I always telling you this story with Shinsel is that in fact there's been a great progress uh, in Nyetic number theory in the, in the uh, when was it, uh, 2010, where people proved uh, uh, a quite general case of a two-variable version of Shinsel hypothesis. So, around 2010, you have this work of Green, Tao, and then Ziegler, where they proved the following. So you take, uh, take Li of uv equals uh, Aiu plus Biv, where Ai, Bi are in Z. And I runs from 1 to n, any n, 600, whatever. Okay. And uh, make, so assume some obvious restriction. Obvious restriction is, say, the I and B are positive or something like that. And then the, you have periodic restrictions like the one you have to impose when you switch in salt. So you want to avoid things like t squared plus t plus 2, which is always even. So you're, And you, this is a condition that's finitely prime. So you put these obvious restrictions, which I, I don't want right. And then their conclusion is that then there exist infinitely many pairs of integers, uh, nm. So no, this nm, and sorry, this n here. Uh, uh, CD such that L1 of CD is a prime, LN of CD is a prime. Okay, that's a theorem. That's, uh, you know, if you had something inhomogeneous with a uh, so t, uh, t, you would like to have t, t plus 2, t plus, uh, plus 4. You don't have this, but uh, I have t, t plus uh, 2, uh, t dash, uh, t plus 4, t dash. And so you see, this is uh, a version. So I mean, before going into details, and probably in, actually I started five minutes late. So I have, uh, I think, seven minutes. Seven minutes, seven minutes. So before I try to, to give you a, a concrete proof, of what you, what you can get out of this, it's clear that it is a version of Shinso, okay? Except that you have two variables. So we had this idea that if you use Shinso hypothesis instead of directly in Hasse's proof, you get cases of the Hasse principle. Well, if you use this, this, this result, you're bound to get Hasse principle type of results by using the same argument as Hasse. Finishing with this business, with the reciprocity, that if a conic has some points in all the completion except one, then in fact it has a rational point. Okay. So this has been uh, uh, developed in work of uh, Browning. So the, the list of things you can get and, uh, has been developed in, in oh gosh, sorry. In paper, so there's one paper which started this line of investigation, Browning. Mathison, Skorobogatov. And then there's a further paper by Arpaz, uh, Skorobogatov, and Wittenberg. So, uh, uh, so the result is, so here's, so here's, here's one theorem. I'll give you a general theorem in the last two minutes. So that is in three and four minutes. So theorem, we're back to our beloved equations. We look at y square minus az square equals product i running from one to arbitrary uh, 2n. You can reduce to that case uh, an even number of factors t minus ei, where a is in q. This time we're in q. We're not in arbitrary number field and the EI are in Q, 
and EI is different from EG. Okay, and we look at this op this variety, U, over Q. And say uh, X is a smooth compactification. Then the statement is that then X of Q top is equal to X of AQ bra. So we have a conic bundle with an arbitrary number of bad fibers. I told you this is invariant delta, which measures the number of non-split fibers. Here it can be arbitrary, but the, but the points where it, it's bad have to be rational over the ground field. And then in that case, we have a proof that the, the rational points are dense in the Brahman in set. Okay. So uh, I suppose I would stop the next lecture by giving the proof. So let me, yeah, for, I see if I embark into this, I, uh, maybe I should do it. Okay, after all, I have five minutes. Is it correct? Uh, who are, where are the organizers? I'm not taking, is it right, correct that I have five minutes or is it not? No answer. <laughs> That's correct, yeah? So, so I, 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 I want to sketch the proof of this one, and next time I'll tell you the general theorem. I just, I'll finish the lecture by sketching the proof of this one, which is really quite, which, which I like because it's, it involves a trick. The trick is, promise that here you have just one variable, t. And in, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the green tau Ziegler theorem, you have two variables. So you must produce two variables. So you look at the auxiliary equation, capital Y square minus A Z, capital Z square equals B, so I got a B here, let me put a B here, equals B product of U minus E I V, I range from one to N, so where the variables are uh, y, capital Y, capital Z, U and V. So these are the variables, Y, Z, U and V. And then you make a change of variables. If you look, make the change of variable, little y is capital Y over V to the N. This was 2N here. Uh, little z equals capital Z over V to the N, and T equals U over V. You find that the new variety we have here, V, a duration to the previous one is that V is, by, is isomorphic to U cross GM, where the GM is the T variable. And so to prove, because it's stable by rational to the previous one, to prove what we want, it's enough to prove it for this other one. Because as I told you, the Brahmanian property is stable by much reason by P1. Okay. Okay. And then on this one, you, you look at a finite subgroup of Bragoba V, which is spanned by the quaternion algebras A comma U minus E I V. Okay, so there are, this is in the function field of this variety, and A is this constant, so I have this quaternion algebras. And then you apply Harris formal lemma. Okay, and out of this pops out by the same mechanism which we saw before. Uh, the sequence of class C theory, uh, pops out element CI in K star, such that the system YI square minus AZI square equals CI um, uh, U minus EIV, I range from 1 to 2N, uh, has solutions, so this has solutions in all KV, and, uh, and B is the product, you check, is the product of the CI. So that there's a map from this variety to the original one. Y square minus AZ square equals B product of the U minus EIV. And from one to two, and simply by multiplying. Okay. But now you're in a situation where you have these norms of prior extension on the left hand side, and then you have this CI, U minus EIV on the right hand side. And then you apply, the, so I told you with Schinzel, you have the brutal Schinzel over Z, 
and then you have the variation uh, divided by SER. So you can do the same thing with these linear forms, and you apply this, and in the end, you end up with uh, a system, you end up with um, some u, u0, v0, such that the system y minus azi zi square equals ci u0 minus ei v0. This system, i running from 1 to, uh, to, to, to n, uh, and this is now in, this is now in q, huh? and this is non zero, has solutions in all, K, in all QP and R, and U0 minus, uh, CI U0 minus EI V0 is the product of one mysterious primes times primes which you control. Q and S with some part and Q. And so now you have a product of conics. So this is one, the first C1 is a conic, multiplied by the second one, multiplied by the nth one, and each conic has points in all the completion except one, therefore it is a point in the last one, therefore it is a rational point, therefore the product of conics is a rational point, and then you push that into your, into your variety and you produce a rational point. Okay, so I'll stop here.